So, um, hello, good morning. So, um, I, I can assure that my communication skills in Spanish are much, much better than in English, but I hope it shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, first of all, I want, I want to introduce uh, where I'm working. I work in this uh, uh, study center of um, science, communication, and society. Our center uh, belongs, belongs to the Department of uh, Experimental Science, but before to, to go to the Experimental Science Department, we, we were in the Communication Department. So uh, our aim is to bring closer together science and society, and in order to reach this objective, we promote uh, scientific culture among the citizens, and also we work uh, um, for a better alignment between the research and development and innovation with the society's needs and values. So you can see that it's very, very related with the concept of responsible research and innovation that we will talk uh, after. In order to reach these uh, objectives, we make uh, we we, we um, uh, make some kinds of activities like uh, research and teaching, and also organize uh, public engagement activities. Uh, that is, uh, and, and, and this is because we have this large experience for more than 20 years in the science communication and public engagement activities. This is the publicitary part of my presentation. <laughs> and now that is finished, I want to, I, my aim of, on this talk is uh, we have, uh, I have two aims, two objectives. First of all, to convince you that uh, science communication is good for you and to incorporate uh, public engagement um, practices and to incorporate the idea of ref reflection about the impact of the research or your field it's important, but not, not only in terms of impact in science, it's also the impact in society. I, I, I try to convince you that it's good for you and for your organizations. And uh, the second objective of this talk is to co also convince you that if you are applying for a Marie Curie action, um, it's uh, good for you to have to integrate this kind of, uh, of uh, concepts because they could add value to your proposal and they could represent the difference between to get or not to get this uh, uh, funding. So, uh, why is important science communication? Uh, in these days that we, we have, uh, we, we heard about deniers of uh, climate change, deniers of vaccination, uh, or any uh, or a, the, the um, viral uh, cause of uh, AIDS, for instance, uh, it's, a, it's important for the scientific community go outside and uh, talk with the public. And uh, because may, many of these uh, um, groups of society uh, are entering in the government, for instance, in, in the Trump gov uh, government, the, the group that is in charge of decisions about vaccines is leader by a, a person that is against vaccination. And uh, climate change uh, has uh, this, uh, from um, human origin, uh, has uh, this group of deniers. So uh, for the people that is working in, in research, it's important to go outside and to go outside our comfort zone that uh, normally we are. Journals like Nature or Science has uh, reflect this, this necessity, and even in Nature, they have declared that uh, 2017 is the year of public engagement. Science go a little bit more, and uh, they say that a responsible researcher not only have to, to talk with the public, but they have to also listen to the public, because it's not just to convince them that we have the truth, but also to uh, hear why are they, uh, um, uh, in, they can have uh, other opinions that are not ours. So we can hear and try to incorporate their, their opinions or to convince them if, if we necessity. So this necessity of science communication and public engagement and to go more uh, of our, uh, beyond our comfort zone is, is a reality and it's a reversible uh, reality for, for us. 
Uh, even in the career of a, of a scientist, of a, of a person that is a, want to, to work in a research center or, or a university, more and more is being considered disabil disabilities and experience in outreach activities and science communication. This is the, I, I've been recently involved in, a, in an assessment, in a job position, the assessment, I'm sorry, the assessment of a job position in, in a, one of the biggest uh, universities in Denmark. And in the criteria to assess the, the candidates, of course they put the research, impact factor and so on, and the teaching experience, but they also consider as a complementary uh, skill these outreach activities, experience, and so on. So, and, and this is a, ten, a trend that we will see in future years. And uh, it is even in the, in the Spanish law of science, uh, there is some sentence that, uh, that are in this uh, way, but probably will will not see in the short term, but probably in the future. So it's important for the career of a, of a researcher, it's important for the organization to get fundings, of course, but also for the society. But when we talk about uh, science communication, science communication, communication is an, a, a very ambiguous word. It uh, uh, has many dimensions. If we consider that science communication and public engagement are like a ladder, we can go to the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom, there is no info, the inf the, no information at all. So this is not uh, the, the, we cannot see this kind of, of, uh, of uh, politics, of, of policy in communication now, now, because it's just for non-democratic uh, countries, maybe. But now it's impossible to think in a, in, a, in a project or in a institution that not communicate at all. So if we go a little bit uh, upper in this ladder, we go to the information in an, your, your one direction. I communicate to the public through media, for instance, or through my website, or with uh, exhibitions, talks, um, open days, something like this, that is just I, I want to explain the, the things that I do, but I didn't hear what the people say that is necessary for them, and the, I, don't, I don't integrate the needs of the society in my research. We go a little bit uh, uh, further in this, in this ladder, and this, the, social, the, the uh, social networks like Twitter or Facebook or, or our blogs, if we have this kind of commentaries, it uh, normally they, they allow some kind of participation, a few, but some kind. So it's a, it's a we are going uh, up, up. There are another activities that, that we call the informal settings of public activities, and we also talk about MML, that it means uh, mutual, uh, mutual mobilization and learning activities. And these are uh, activities uh, created specific, specifically to uh, put um, publics or some kind of group of some groups of stakeholders or publics with researchers and at the same level. Everybody has their own um, expertise. I'm expert in this kind of, of research, uh, this, this field of research, but maybe an, a future user, a consumer, or a, I don't know, a parent is expert in their children needs and they have a, a, another experience, another knowledge. So the idea with these kinds of activities is in an informal way to receive, uh, to talk and also to hear these uh, needs and, and, and knowledge that they are part of the, of the process. If we go a little bit up in the ladder, we go to more formalized ways of public participation like, um, uh, I don't know, citizens' panels, the referendum. A referendum is the, the biggest, the universal uh, way of consult people if they are against or pro uh, question, for instance. No? These are more formalized. Normally, we need a government, a government uh, uh, organization to lead these kind of activities. And in this kind of uh, practices, it is supposed that the opinion of people is integrated in a policy or in a governance decision. A 
little bit uh, upper, we have some kind of experimental uh, activities like uh, citizen science, community-based research, and science shops. These kind of activities are, um, they, cannot apply, can, they cannot be applied to every, to each, uh, I'm sorry, to each uh, uh, project or field of, uh, of uh, science, but they can in, in, some, in some cases. For instance, uh, citizen science is these activities that uh, allow citizens to, um, uh, to gather data for the, for the uh, research. Um, they, they have been uh, some, uh, some examples of these activities. So we see that there are a, 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 this ladder of science communication, and if you are applying for this Marie Curie action, uh, maybe you can a good idea could be in the, in the plan of, in the communication plan or in the training for the, these uh, scientists to train not only in communi oral communication skills, body language, or how to talk with the public, how to make a poster, how to write a paper, a part of that that is also important, maybe you can also include some kind of these bi-directional bi activities or more public engagement uh, um, at activities. These are, uh, because these are in line of what is, is being talked in, uh, in many places. This project is a European project, Engage 2020. It has a, a kind of a toolkit of different activities and you put what are your needs and they say, well, for your needs, it's better to have a science cafe or it's better to have, a, I don't know, a science, a science date, like a speed date, but with scientists, for instance. And uh, it's very useful because it has some kind of definition of what these activities are. It's, uh, it's very useful to prepare some projects. Uh, as, uh, as you can see, when we talk about we are not talking just of science communication, we are talking about public engagement. Uh, and public engagement is very, very, very related with another concept that we have heard in the presentation of uh, Josep. And uh, probably most of you have heard about RRI, Responsible Research and Innovation. So it doesn't mean that researchers are not responsible now, but it, man it means that we want them or us to be more responsible. There are different definitions about uh, RRI because it's a new concept, and as a new concept, there is an ongoing definition. The first one is the definition from the uh, Engineers and um, Physics Science and Research Council from the UK, and they use the, the word socially desirable, so research should be socially desirable. That's important because this, this word, desirability, is always in the, in the definitions about RRI. And the European Commission in the definition in 2012, they say that RRI means that societal actors work together during the whole research and innovation process in order to better align both the process and its outcomes with the values, the needs, and the expectations of European society. Needs, values, and expectations. If we see when in the concept of grand challenges, we were talking about needs, which, where, uh, which are the big needs of society, and they define the grand challenges that you know very well. But we are talking about another uh, concept that are values and expectations. Expectation means that what is the uh, society want? They want, I don't know, as a citizen, do you want to be more intelligent? You want to live longer? Uh, you want to um, live in a rural society? I don't know. These are the expectations. Maybe they are not the needs or challenges in the idea of your uh, EC um, poses some years ago. So in, in, the, in the RRI concept, we are considering needs, but also expectations. And the third concept is the, the concept of values and what, what are our values. They are shared values in our society, and uh, we try to um, provide some um, skills to incorporate also these values, how we make research, how uh, we use resources in research, 
how we organize our team in women and, and men or in other inclusive aspects. So this, uh, the, the origin of the concept of RRI came from um, different um, fields of research and, and practice, like technology assessment. Those of you that are working in, in technology uh, knows that many uh, companies and many pro, uh, pro, um, projects incorporate this technology assessment in the, in the way that you are looking for the future impact of this technology in a, in a visionary uh, scenario, and you try to think what impact will, will have this technology. So this is part of the conception of RRI. Public engagement, of course, because in RRI we think that uh, uh, decisions or the, the process is responsibility for uh, all groups or all groups of stakeholders. ELSA means uh, ethical, legal, and societal aspects research, uh, corporate social responsibility because it's very related, and many other uh, researches. So as uh, I said, discernibility is not the same of acceptability, it's a little more. Until now, uh, projects, uh, you have to, to, to show that your eth uh, ethical consideration are in the line of acceptability, you are in the uh, legal um, framework, you have considered, you have considered uh, the, um, uh, okay, the, the measurement of excellence in science in terms of bibliometrical, bibliometrics like uh, impact factor and so on, and number of, of citations. But when, when we talk about uh, RRI, uh, we are talking about other shared values, and we consider that we can go better and we can go beyond the mandatory. And then uh, we can enter some kind of reflection like sustainability of the research, gender equality, inclusiveness, open access, because we consider that these are now uh, some of these uh, shared values. Of course, we can put a lot of them. There are many things that we can put here, and this is the problem of RRI that is very, very ambiguous. So some institutions has, um, have tried to uh, have more pragmatical definition, and the European Commission has its own. This is another aspect that we consider when we talk about RRI. RRI Tools is a, was a big, big, big project from the SWAFT uh, program, and they talk about uh, open and transparent, that is the case of open access and so on, anticipative, but because it's the reflection, always the reflection about what could be the future impact of my research. This is important. For instance, uh, we, we train uh, young scientists in RRI, and one of our main objectives is that these young people consider their, their own field of research, not only in the short term, but also in the long term, and the summative effect of everybody that is in, the, in this field. It's uh, difficult because sometimes we are talking about science fiction, but we can include some kind of abilities to talk and, and for instance, to incorporating multidisciplinary uh, people, okay, incorporating multidisciplinary uh, uh, team and so on. Um, okay, there are some more documents that I, I put in my presentation if you want to, to use or cite in your proposal. And uh, this is the, the, um, the project that uh, we lead uh, is uh, creating teaching materials in RRI and we, we, it will be open uh, when it finishes in August of 2018. This is the definition of European Commission. It's very, very pragmatic. They talk about six uh, key issues, public engagement, gender equality, science education, open access, ethics and governance. Uh, public engagement, this is the particular definition of uh, European Commission. They talk about group of actors, uh, all societal actors that could be um, uh, future users, for instance, but also people that could be affected by uh, the progression of our technology. They talk about the, the engagement of all these group of stakeholders, about participation, 
and about to choose, because at the end you have to choose one option or one other, and you have to include, to incorporate this um, kind of opinions or, or um, uh, everything. And the, to, the together, like the responsibility. Gender, uh, Joseph have uh, talked about, just to remind that we, when we talk about gender, we talk about two aspects. One is the, the incorporate the gender or, or sex dimension into our research, in the object of our research. Try to think if this is different for women or this is different for, for men. And if not, you have to justify why not. This is one aspect. And the other aspect uh, has to be with the human capital. How is your team? Is, is uh, uh, your team uh, um, paritary? I don't know if it is the, the word in English in terms of gender and why not, if you have a, I don't know, if you organize any kind of activity or teaching activity, everything, you have to consider also the human capital if it is in the line of European Commission. Um, okay, open access, I, I want to recommend you to go to this new emphasis for the European Commission in the open innovation, open science, open to the world, that uh, Commissioner Moedas is uh, recently talking uh, a lot about this three O's uh, policy, and it's also, it's very related with RRI, but this uh, open society. And to finish, I just want to, to go to some parts of the, proposal that uh, I, I, my, I personally I consider that you can put uh, some emphasis when you are trying to, to, to explain that you are, you are very good in science communication, in public engagement, impact, and RRI. Uh, this is one uh, that is in the, uh, the definition of excellence. Uh, this is the, the gender dimension, but also when you are trying to, to explain why your proposal is excellent, Normally, we, we are going to more uh, very scientific uh, definition of excellence, like impact factor and bibliometrics. Try to also think in why is excellent in terms of uh, if they are in line of uh, needs and, and values and expectation of society. I think it's a, a good idea and it could also add some value because if you know there are now some movements that are uh, thinking about the definition of excellence in science. And the, these movements want to incorporate the societal dimension of uh, 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 the excellence. There are also the quality, in, the, in this point, quality and appropriateness of the training. This, there is in the training activities, there are a lot of them. Uh, like uh, uh, organization, of uh, scientific training dissemination events, communication outreach activities, training dedicated to gender issues. There are many of them are related with training in science communication. So if you go to this training, not just one way direction, but also this B direction or multi-dimensional uh, training and try to, to go uh, a little bit further for the conventional definition of communication. There is the, also a big part of impact and the, these are, uh, this is the, in the blue, you can go to a document that the uh, European Commission is working on. And they have, uh, because now they, they, they want to stress very, uh, a lot in the uh, dissemination and communication part and exploitation of the research. Because many projects, when finished, they, they are for, uh, forgiven. So the idea of commission that is that in every project we have, a, ha, we have to include a strong plan of communication, dissemination, and exploitation. So if you go to this part, you will see the difference between dissemination and exploitation and communication. It is a little bit different, and then you can go, and there are a lot of examples, and you can explain this, uh, the activities. Uh, Okay, and the to communicate, well, this is part of, of the same. So this was my, my objective. I, I hope I, I could convince at, uh, at least some of you. Thank you. <laughs>